Well, Saturn, for me, is the most beautiful object I know in the sky. I can remember the first time I ever saw it through a telescope. And I just looked, I just couldn't believe this view of this planet and its rings. The rings are the thing that make it special at first glance. How can something as exotic and beautiful as that just be sitting out there, not so far from us on, a, on the scale of the universe? So I've always had a liking for Saturn. And then, of course, with the Cassini mission, I found I had a very distinct interest in the science of Saturn. And it's true, the Cassini mission has removed some of the mysteries of Saturn. It's counted the number of moons. It's seen what the rings are made of and so on. On the other hand, as often happens, there are as many discoveries as there are new questions asked. As you come to one, you, when you're hiking, you come to a range of hills, you get to the peak of the hills and you look into the next, you see there's more hills beyond. And I think it's fair to say that Saturn still has mysteries to be resolved. Some of the mysteries will be resolved by ana analysing all of the data that we took over the last um, 15 years with Cassini. It's just we haven't analysed it all. It's, so there is more to come in terms of exploration, but there are, there are surely going to be mysteries remaining. For me, the first mystery was the rings. What are they? Are they the beginning of a moon or the end of a moon? How long have they been there? Well, I think they're, by very clever analysis, I think the later ones, some of the latest results are that the moons are relatively, re the rings are relatively recent. And so I think the, it's maybe 10, 100 million years old, which sounds a long time, but not when you remember the solar system is four and a half billion years old. So the, the rings are relatively new. And if you, well, no human has ever seen Saturn without its rings, but if the dinosaurs had had a telescope they would have seen a Saturn without rings. That for me is a magical thing. Very surprising. The, the rings are relatively young. They're um, relatively, how we found that out is by the analysis of the mass of the rings. And the way we could un understand the mass of the rings was the very end of the Cassini mission, going, taking the spacecraft inside the rings and looking at the very subtle changes in the orbit of the spacecraft due to the change gravity because you're passing inside the gravity of the rings. Now let's go back to the really surprising mysteries. I am a magnetometer person and Saturn's magnetic field has one massive remaining mystery. Cassini has only serve to polish the mystery and make it clearer as something that uh, planetary scientists don't understand. We always assumed that Saturn's magnetic field had in some way, the internal field of the planet itself had in some way to be asymmetric. And the reason we believe that is that the field is made by what's called a dynamo. And what drives that you've got to have electrical conductors moving, moving electrical conductors to make a dynamo work. Here the dynamo is inside Saturn and the, the engine that drives the motion is heat. And so think of 
a saucepan with water in it bubbling and you've got to sort of turn over the system. Uh, it turns out you, the only way you can make a magnetic field continuously is if it's asymmetric around the centre. You can't make it purely symmetric in all directions. So somehow or other, deep within Saturn, there's a process that is asymmetric and somehow above that, there's something going on in the interior of Saturn that hides us, hides from us these things that we know must be there. The extraordinary thing is that although the field is axially symmetric as Saturn rotates, the magnetic field doesn't change if you sit at one point because it rotates exactly like the planet. No other planet has been found really like that. But then it turns out that the, the north-south symmetry along the rotation axis is asymmetric. The field, the axis of the symmetry point north-south is shifted quite substantially off the centre of the planet. That's another puzzle. I mean, it's almost as if Saturn, before we got there, said, well, let's look at what planetary scientists have predicted and just show that they're wrong because really there's an awful lot of work to be able to reproduce this magnetic field. We have now measured ex extremely accurately to one part in 10 to the 5. There isn't any query what the field is. There is a query as how it got there. The, uh, if that's one mystery, the next mystery I would say is why if you're outside Saturn and you measure the magnetic field, can you see that the magnetic field appears to be rotating? It's nothing to do with the interior of Saturn. It's somehow associated with the northern and southern polar caps that rotate at slightly different uh, rotation rates and somehow make a magnetic signal far out from the planet um, but not giving us the rotation rate of the planet but the rotation rate of the upper atmosphere which is something different. Indeed, to the embarrassment of the magnetometer team I would say, the length of the day on Saturn has not been determined from the magnetic field as you would expect it to be everywhere else. Jupiter, for example, the most accurate way to measure the magnetic field of Jupiter is from the, to measure the length of day at Jupiter is from the magnetic field. No, it's from the gravity, from the gravity in the rings that tells us the day is uh, 633 minutes plus some seconds long. The day measured by the magnetic field Believe it or not, there are two, two periods, one for the northern hemisphere, one for the south. It varies with season, with summer or winter. It ranges between 636 minutes and 648. Myself, I think I'm at the point almost of being able to solve that problem and explain why we get these external magnetic signals that give an illusion of knowing the time of day. Um, but it's an embarrassment for a magnetometer person that uh, the final time of day at Saturn has been given by the gravity team on the Cassini spacecraft. So there are plenty of open questions. I haven't mentioned the moons. All of the moons raised as many questions <laughs> as they answered. We landed on Titan, we discovered lakes on Titan, uh, but still we could go back and just send a mission to explore Titan more fully. In the same way, Enceladus, this moon with a liquid ocean in its interior, do we really understand why it's liquid? It's a tiny object, it should have cooled down. 
Why is it still able to keep liquid, a liquid ocean going? There are theories, but my belief is there are still mysteries. Moreover, what is going on in that ocean, the astrobiology of that ocean, or at least the organic chemistry of that ocean, is for me another fascinating mystery. So um, we, uh, we went to Saturn. We solved some of the mysteries, but I have to say, we came back with new ones that will keep us occupied.